They're, they're approaching the final landing circle now, or the landing cylinder. Uh, they have gone through a series of what they call S-turns, where they've used up the orbital energy. And they are now approaching this landing circle where they'll make a final turn onto their uh, approach to the runway. They're going to make, be making some S-turns uh, with the shuttle to decrease their landing speed. In fact, they, they did that. They have done that at, at like Mach 25, Mach 20, Mach 10. There the, there's the sonic boom as the shuttle goes over. It's like when you're skiing and down a, a, a steep slope when you uh, rock back and forth and dissipate energy into the snow. The same, they do the same thing as they come into the atmosphere. They make big rolls or S turns and lose energy into the atmosphere. There's also a test that's going to be conducted on landing. Uh, the uh, uh, steering system, the nose wheel steering system, uh, has been altered a little bit, a new system that they're going to use. They're going to go about 20 feet off the runway center line uh, to test uh, if the nose wheel steering works instead of using the brakes to attempt to steer uh, the big space plane. Right, they would like to be able to steer at higher ground speeds, and so they have adjusted the steering system over the way it was originally to be able to do this steering. Because of a small nav error, the uh, surface winds are calm, altimeter is still 3018, and this is up to 7 miles plus. David? Doesn't sound like the winds are going to be any problem. That's right. It. It's a pretty day out there. It's, they said there's Touchdown some haze, but no clouds, as you can see. About two minutes away from touchdown at Edwards Air Force Base in California. If the nose test is successful, the nose wheel steering test, uh, they will begin sometime in December uh, landing at the Kennedy Space Center. What advantages will that offer them? Well, Gordon Fulton said yesterday they would do one more uh, nose wheel test at Edwards, and then they would start coming into Kennedy if that looks good. It's, it's to a, a great advantage. Of course, it saves the... The, the trouble and time of having to load the orbiter onto the 747 and fly it across the country, which takes a couple of days to do. And also, if you're doing experiments like they are here, where they're testing the adaptation of the inner ear to microgravity and then back again, it helps to land at Kennedy because they have an entire laboratory there at Kennedy to do the experiments in. Seven hours after touchdown, uh, five of the uh, shuttle's astronauts will be taking a flight back to the Kennedy Space Center well, they will be spending the next two weeks going through a series of medical tests, uh, basically the same tests they performed in outer space, and uh, they will be repeated on the ground to match the results. That's right, and of course you'd like to do those tests beginning as quickly as you can because the adaptation takes place very rapidly. All right, the shuttle is now uh, coming up on the end of the runway, a uh, very Challenger steep glide path. Let's runway. listen in as the uh, last few seconds seven. of the mission take away. About a minute and five seconds away from touchdown. Andrew Houston, we show you on glide slope, on center line. Surface winds are calm. Roger. They're at an approach angle of about 19 degrees. That compares with only a few degrees in a normal airliner, so they're coming down pretty fast at this stage. I've seen pictures inside the shuttle as you come up on the runway, and it, it looks like you're dive bombing uh, <laughs> straight down into the right. end of it. That's right. They've got now good microwave-type contact with the runway that's giving them information on their velocity and their altitude. They're matching that with displays on board that have the predicted velocity and altitude, and Henry Hartsfield will bring it on down, and in a few, just a few seconds, will flare, flare the spacecraft nose upward, or in this case, the airplane nose upward to lose the final speed and then Land come down. The final pre-flare. Landing gear should be coming down. There they are. They're now at about 250 miles per hour. We'll have to see a replay to tell whether exactly how far he steered off the center line. It's hard to see from this angle. He was supposed to steer 20 feet uh, in either direction uh, as part of this test. Very nice landing. 
So as Space Shuttle Challenger rolls to a stop, it marks an end of the 22nd shuttle mission for the United States. Inside uh, the orbiter is the German Space Lab. And